So let's call our select board meeting to order for April 15th, 2020. Um, one thing I'd just like to say before the start of the meeting is that we're gonna do a mute all policy. So we're gonna mute everybody's microphone except for the select board. Um, actually, I don't see John. I wonder if we should wait for John. <laughs> but uh, the select board and David Nixon and then if you want to make a comment, you can either chat everyone that you'd just like to make a comment and we can unmute you or um, or just kind of raise your hand in the meeting and try to pay attention to you and do it. You might be waving a lot, but um, we'll try to get to you. Okay, so then we'll just roll in here with the consent agenda. Uh, we have warrants to approve. Well, actually, Jennifer, have you heard from John at all? He's coming right now. I'll give him just a second. It okay, just... maybe I'll wait just one second until he joins before I do the warrants. So, Stadium. John, is that you? I'm not seeing the feed on uh, YouTube either, just in case anyone's working on that. We're doing a brief delay to allow for uh, no surprises five second delay, like uh, live sports, you know? I, I believe, I believe it's it something along, I believe it's something along those lines that John Harrison is doing for us. Okay. Just not to have any Janet Jackson kind of moments. <laughs> yeah. Right, John Harrison? Oh, there's John. Here we go. John, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I just figured it out. Okay, oh, great. It's kind of sitting there. I got the volume, but no picture. <clears throat> We're okay. good. Can you hear yep. me? Yeah. All right. I'm just going to roll into the consent agenda here. I was just kind of waiting for you. Um, so we have warrants to approve AP 2036, AP 2036S, AP 2037. AP 2037S, AP 2037APR, AP 2038, AP 2018, AP 2038S, AP 2038-2. And then I have the Massachusetts School Building Authority Statement of Interest in Construction Grant and I need to read the whole thing. So, um, you know, go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do right now, but here it is. So uh, required form of vote to submit a statement of interest. We have required votes. So if the statement of interest is being submitted by a city or town, a vote in the following form is required from both the city council slash board of aldermen or the board of selectmen and the school committee. If the SOI is being submitted by a regional school district, a vote in the following form is required from the regional school committee only. Current votes for each SOI submission are required. So the form of the vote, uh, it says, please use the text below to prepare your city's towns or districts required votes. Resolved, having convened in an open meeting on April 15th, 2020, it says April 25th here, I don't know if that's a typo or not, but we'll put April 15th, 2020, because that's today. Prior to the SOI submission closing date, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hadley, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the Statement of Interest form dated May 6, 2020, for the Hopkins Academy, located at 131 Russell Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems, specifically replacement of the heating univent system and replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest form, 
the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Documentation of vote. Documents of each vote must be submitted in hard copy to the MSBA BA as follows. One, for the vote of the city council, board of aldermen, or select board equivalent governing body, a copy of the text of the vote must be submitted with the certification of the city town clerk that the vote was duly recorded and the date of vote must be provided. And two, for the vote of school committee, minutes of the school committee meeting at which the vote was taken must be submitted with the original signature of the committee chairperson. Okay, so that's that. May I have a motion? <laughs> motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, actually, um, one thing I think we need to do now with no, these meetings is a roll call vote. Um, so David, maybe, uh, David Nixon, maybe you could roll call vote for us. Okay, so what? Skevitz? Uh, is there anything pertaining to DPW on the uh, consent agenda? No. All right. I didn't have a Other chance. I, I just got the information at 3 o'clock. So. Um, all right. Yes. Uh, Phil? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. And we're missing uh, Chunglo. Thank you. Can, can I also ask you to take a vote to uh, sign this document and all other documents in this meeting with using the signature stamp? Yeah. Uh, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we sign all the documents in tonight's meeting using the signature stamp uh, without Joyce's signature, obviously, unless she shows up. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Are they made in? Are they made individually, or are they all? All of us are on one stamp. Do you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna scientifically use a piece of scotch tape to cover up Joyce's uh, signature. <laughs> okay. Yes. Aye. You want to roll call vote us again, David? I know no, I don't it's cumbersome. Need roll but... call vote. I, I I don't need that. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So uh, new business on the agenda. The first thing on the agenda was the select board reorganization, uh, which typically happens after the town election. Uh, Joyce has made a request that we skip this over tonight and wait until she returns next week. Uh, so I think we could just go right into the tri-board meeting. And here we're meeting with the finance committee and the school committee to discuss preparations for the fiscal year 2021 budget. Um, finance committee will finish their review of the budget by discussing the Hadley media budget and so forth. So if you want to give Amy Fiden just a moment, she's trying to get in. I know oh, they don't okay. have a quorum yet, but she's coming. Okay. For those of you who want to uh, look at the uh, Hadley media, page 75. Now, this budget has not been revised at all. This is the one that was submitted um, prior in February. That's correct. This is the last budget for the Finance Committee to review. Okay. Um, obviously, the picture has changed uh, enormously since uh, February 19th when I submitted a balanced budget. It's not balanced anymore. Uh, I'll speak at length about that in a moment. Yes. <laughs> Cat tails are getting pretty big over there, David. <laughs> <laughs> 
she leaves me alone all day long until I sit in this particular chair, and then she's yeah. drawn like a magnet to me. <clears throat> David, are those storage boxes uh, behind your head there? Yes, they are. They're full of, uh, that's where I put my Christmas gifts as I add to my collection throughout the year. Oh, it's a familiar sight. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. She is coming. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm texting her through as we're, as y'all are chatting. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't want to necessarily move on to something else, but. We could do a uh, human resources director temporary replacement just while we're waiting here. Um, I think that'll be quick, so. Uh, All right, let me. You, you got that there, David? So for this, uh, I'm just gonna discuss the replacement of Ed O'Connor, who is leaving for uh, deployment in is it late July. June, July time Mid frame? July, yes. <laughs> Mid July. Um, Miss Deborah Rat, uh, Deborah Radway, former human resources director for the town of Amherst, has offered to substitute on a part time basis for Mr. O'Connor. Uh, we have a revised budget showing the net effect of Mr. O'Connor's deployment and Miss Radway's service is pre presented below. Uh, reading through her letter of interest and her cover letter. It seems that she's more than well qualified for the position and, and filling in for Ed while he's away. Um, it appears we still have the budget. So I don't know if anybody else has any comments. I would like to enthusiastically make a motion that we accept her letter of interest and hire her. Second that. Okay, any further discussion on that? So we're gonna just to be clear, we're hiring her as a vendor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Deborah. Yeah. this is David Nixon calling. They jumped through the agenda. So it's just gonna be body hour part-time as needed or? Uh, yeah, not to exceed uh, 20 hours a week, John. Um, so some, well, some of the stuff will kind of have to fall back onto the department heads, like maybe posting positions and a few other things. Um, but uh, her focus, I think, will be our union contracts are coming up uh, to expire in June. So there'll yeah. be the negotiation process there. So she'll be involved with that. And then, of course, um, the performance management uh, piece and maybe a little bit of policy here and there. But um, well, that should it's a bit if it's a vendor and if it goes over 20 hours, it shouldn't be an issue then. Um, that's just kind of how we, we have it budgeted. So, uh, you know, and I think for her own personal sake, she doesn't want to work more than 20 hours a week. I, uh, um, that's just kind of how we have it budgeted. So, uh, you know. I just got to get the audio, honey. David, was there anything oh. that you wanted to add? Uh, it looked like you were trying to call Deborah. Yeah, I called her, and she should, she should be joining <laughs> us. Oh, she was going to join. I'm sorry, I didn't know she was going to join us, or else I wouldn't have skipped ahead to that. That's that's quite all right. Uh, the show must go on. Yeah. And Amy Fiden is now on. Okay. I was just looking if I saw her on at all. Uh, she's muted and she doesn't have her video on. I don't know if you can call her, Jennifer. She can hear us and uh, oh. Christian announced that only the select board would be unmuted and if you needed to, to state something, she would, okay. um, you would raise your hand or hit the raise hand on the manage the participant. So, right. um, Jennifer, the iPhone is probably Deb Radway. Is Deb, is that you on iPhone? They're unmuted, but they're not talking. All right. We'll give her a couple more seconds here. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Deb, are you there? Okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, there was a motion in a second. Um, I I would like to hear from Deb before we vote, but I think. Oh. Hello. But I think in in uh, consideration of time, we should just take our vote. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, let's go back uh, the tri board meeting. Uh, Amy, I, uh, thank you for joining us. I don't know if you can uh, hear or your audio's on, but you're gonna start off with the finance committee, uh, finishing the review of the budget by discussing the Hadley media budget. Well, I don't know if you wanna kind of take that and uh, do that review. Yeah, so Amy, that's page 75 of the budget book. And Amy, you need to turn your mute off. Am I on? Can you hear me now? There you are. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, technology. Okay, so uh, I did want, I had some questions about the Hadley Media. Um, I'm not sure if Drew was here, but um, the questions uh, that were I was looking at was they are now trying to move from a, full, from a consultant to a full-time salary um, person. Um, that is not, as far as I, my understanding is, that is not something that... Um, it's, it's more for one it's a, it's more money it's an increase and I don't think that it has been um, is, is favorable with their oversight committee who has done all the research on this so I'm not in big favor of that um, at this time unless there's something else someone else wants to add to that I'd be happy to illuminate a little bit there um, we originally hired uh, uh, Drew as a, a vendor, um, and it became increasingly obvious to us that he was actually working as an uh, department head. He was setting policy, he was directing work, he was supervising personnel. Uh, and in consultation with uh, Ed O'Connor and the N New England Employers Association, mm -hmm. Uh, it became clear that we needed to do something about that position or else we were going to get into trouble with the Internal Revenue Service. So um, Ed and I put our heads together and came up with the salary, uh, moving them to a salaried position or an hourly position is absolutely the right thing to do. Well, I understand that between the, the but at the same, we do have an employee um, also the I, I find that hard to believe why the oversight committee is saying that's not how it normally works with all the other towns that are doing it. And, and, um, and why are we not listening to at, at all or even before we even decide something like this, we're not listening or going through the oversight committee. It's almost thinking, why do we have them? If we don't, it's something this big, we don't, we don't um, talk to them or have any of their input for. I, I understand the 1099 versus an employee. So you def, if we teach, I, I know that from business that you can't tell people when to come in, when not to come in and make them and still have them on 1099. But that's not necessarily the case. He does make his own hours um, and it is, it's not full time all the time and he is doing other work. So um, I just, especially now to have an increase and to put someone on all benefits and everything, I don't think this is a good time to do that. I think it's an issue of labor law. Okay. 
Well, I, 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 then why has it been done so long and why are the other, uh, like uh, all the others doing it this way? I understand, I, I get labor law, but is it really, you know, are we really in violation of labor law because he is doing yeah. other work? Yes, I know. I, I kind of agree with you, Amy. You know, we just hired part time for the HR person and that's pretty much the same thing as what we're doing here right now with the uh, cable committee. Um, not necessarily, uh, John. So, um, you know, Drew has a fairly uh, regularly scheduled presence within the town. He's using all town facilities <laughs> and um, he also uses all town equipment. Um, in terms of the HR director, um, she'll have, you know, no set schedule. She'll be able to come and go as needed. If the town needs 10 hours from her, they'll get 10 hours. If the town needs 20 hours, the town will get 20 hours. Um, so it, it is, it is different. Um, you know, Deb could, you know, even as the acting HR director work from home and a few other things. Um, it's not something that Drew really has the ability or, or is doing. If you were to look at what, you know, a, uh, an employee looks like compared to a consultant, according to the IRS website, Drew is definitely an employee. Um, and then in speaking to the board, um, you know, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. If I am, please let me know. Uh, but it's my understanding that the, the cable oversight committee has had uh, a number of points of contention um, over the years. And, you know, you can kind of see that now, even though I've only been here uh, a few short months, um, the Cable Oversight Committee hasn't had a conversation with my office about this. Um, I, I'd venture to say they haven't had a conversation with a lot of other folks about this, um, but they're also appointed by the select board, uh, really just in terms of advice, you know, broad policy direction for where it should be going. And then Drew's work is very much directed by the needs of um, Hadley Media, you know, as an entity, not necessarily the board. So, um, and to be fair, hiring Drew as an employee would also be more advantageous because there's some boards who aren't getting filmed, for example, the Board of Assessors. Um, so it, it would absolutely serve the town and enhance our, our open meeting uh, presence greatly. Well, I went to a few of their board meetings. I know David Phil has also, and we have, they have spoken, we have uh, uh, spoken to all the uh, members of the board of selectmen, as far as I know, unless someone missed it, but uh, they were given all the input from the committee and all the, uh, all the uh, input of what these other towns are doing and how they're actually making it. Jennifer, would you mind just unmuting Drew if he wanted to say something? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for one thing, I would just like to say that the way that Hadley operates cannot really be compared to other towns because other towns generally have um, outside organizations who are contracted with each town to provide the cable access. And Hadley has it at, runs it as a department. So you're really comparing apples to oranges. Um, as far as being a consultant, I was happy to be hired as a consultant. Um, I was led to believe by one of the oversight committee members that it was in the best interest of Hadley Media to do so, that it would allow us to reduce our overhead charges and that it would um, keep me from being interfered with um, politically. Uh, what's ironic, of course, is that I was interfered with constantly my first year on the job by a member of the oversight committee who I at one point figured had spent 10% of all my hours having him tell me what to do or not to do, uh, not how you treat a consultant. Um, so I just wanted to disabuse you of the notion that somehow other towns are doing it differently and so we need to do it differently. We are, Hadley Media is a town department and that is actually a, an advantage right now during these difficult times. And, uh, and to Amy's point about how at this time it may not be the right time, well our revenues are not driven by tax. Uh, our revenues are driven by subscribers to Charter Spectrum and uh, there is a trend of, of people opting out of cable. They're cutting the cable cord. However, um, I can also say that that's not been happening very fast. And typically during down economic times, people turn to cable because they want some entertainment. So in, a, in some ways, the funding for Hadley Media is more secure than probably anybody else. 
Um, that being said, we do have issues on the horizon. If we spend money faster than we bring it in, um, you know, that's not a long-term way of running a, a department. And I'd hoped to go out and get underwriting. And I don't know that these are gonna be the best economic times to, to obtain underwriting. And I don't know that I'm even the best person to go out and get underwriting because I'm not a salesperson or a marketing person. I'm running a department. Um, and I was hoping that the oversight committee would actually help out in that area. But quite frankly, they were more concerned with who was my boss. And they had that same conversation almost every meeting for three years, as opposed to actually working on any of the projects that needed done. And um, I'm disappointed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda, it looks like Linda wanted to say something real quick. <laughs> you got her. Uh, Linda, you might still be muted. Maybe on your end. How's that? There we go. We can hear you. Okay. All right. Um, Amy had asked earlier, why was it done a certain way for so many years? I want to jump in here now and support what Ed has said. There's, that's really been on the, on the edge. It was clear when Drew was hired in Lee, especially since it was mid-year and it was a contract for him to run the position, run the, uh, run the program that, um, that he was an independent contractor. It was his choice. It was the committee's choice. As things developed over the next couple of years, they were really pretty close to the edge of, uh, a lot of it was about control. We went back and forth several times between um, things that the committee was saying, what was Drew was saying. And at the time, it was before Ed was here, it was Joan Zusko and me, and we had spoken with someone, um, uh, you know, with a consultant. And he was pretty close to the edge and, and, and we really felt kind of uncomfortable about him continuing to be an independent contractor given the relationship and, and the control that the board was continuing to assert over how the programming was run. Um, so given that, and, and now Ed's uh, you know, coming on and, and having an opportunity to look at it more closely, um, certainly I wouldn't want, I would not want it not to go through because it hasn't been done this way for the, first, for the, for the last few years. Uh, we completely support um, a change to him being an employee because um, it did it did feel very much to us that this was the direction that it was is going in over the past few years. So I think a change was in order. Okay, Amy, are you still there? I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Twice. twice. Yeah, you might be on twice, but <laughs> I don't know. I could be. Uh, give me a minute. Is that better? Amy, you need to turn the volume off on one of your devices. That's why the feedback's happening. Okay. If I could also just add one more thing, um, you know, if uh, and Drew, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but if Drew were to ever su submit a formal complaint, um, these sort of matters tend to favor the employee more so than the employer. And I would hate to see the town get hit with those fines. And we'd probably pay more than what we'd be paying Drew. And if I can just chime in, I was the liaison to the Hadley Advisory Board and the um, Hadley Media for the past few years. Um, and I'd just like to reiterate the point that it's been a journey. Um, I was initially very supportive of uh, bringing Drew on as a consultant, but as as things played out over the years, um, there's no doubt in my mind that this is absolutely the right move for the town to make right now, um, and want to support everything that Linda and Ed are saying, and Drew. Amy, did you fix your, oh, she left. I don't know what's happened to her. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Um. And I hope you don't mind, but I need to have my kids come and get their dinner now. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pause. Yeah, sorry, Drew. I was going to say, maybe somebody can um, call her on her cell. I don't have her cell. 
I'll do it now. Okay. Are there any, uh, Paul or Dylan, do you guys have, oh. I have reached Amy, but I'm not, oh. there she is, nope. she's back. No, that was her voicemail. Oh no, but she's here on the video, oh, see her. Okay. Can't hear her, <laughs> you there? Hello, nothing, you can't hear me? Oh, we can hear you, I just heard you. <laughs> no, we can hear you, Amy, oh, <laughs> oh no. She sounded good there for a second. Okay. Does uh, the, any of the other finance okay. committees have any uh, um, questions about the Hadley Media budget? None for me. Um, that was my question that Amy asked, but uh, satisfied with the answer. Yeah, I I was in the same camp. I I guess my. Uh, you know, I, I understand what everybody's saying. I think I'm just concerned about what we're going to do to pay for everything that we're facing with the lower uh, revenues that we're going to be seeing. And I think that's more the general concern um, more than anything else is, you know, to see an increase. Um, not, not to question the value of the work being done and the need for it. It's just one more increase that we're going to have to fund somehow. Um, so I think there's a much bigger discussion uh, rather than, you know, specific targeting of a particular item here more than that needs to be aired in terms of having a plan out there. Um, yeah, when, we're going to get through this. Sorry. I, I agree. When they when they run out of money, how are we going to fund it? That's, that's my big question. Well, one of the, the things that the advisory committee was um, <clears throat> going to be working on was looking into the possibility of forming a third party organization, which is what many municipalities have done, or even joining forces with the neighboring communities media program. So I, I think that's still on the table and still something that should be done. To your point, you know, about future viability. Um, I'm new to the finance committee, so excuse my ignorance if I get this wrong, but uh, does Hadley Media produce a revenue at all? The time? Hadley Media is an enterprise fund, and their their one source of income is the four percent per gross sales of cable services in the town. That works out to about sixty nine thousand dollars annually. That payment comes in and one payment in mid June. So give or take a thousand dollars. This is a revenue neutral. It covers itself. I think the long-term prospect for uh, Hadley Media, if they are not able to um, diversify their income stream, add more revenues, is that we are going to have to look at transitioning them away from an enterprise fund and um, onto the tax rate. But that's a discussion for the future. Uh, not this year, not next year, but maybe three or four years from now. Uh, they are going to be in a position where they're going to start the negotiations for the successor contract through charter communications. We currently have a 10-year uh, contract, which expires in October 2024. Uh, but by state law, the um, ramp up is a three-year process. It's called an ascertainment process. And so the committee and Drew and I will be working on starting that uh, uh, ascertainment process uh, towards the end of this calendar year. At that time, we can negotiate for higher fees, um, other kinds of benefits that we're currently not getting, clarify some ambiguities within the charter agreement. Amy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here now. I'm sorry. Can okay. You hear me? That's okay. Yep, we can hear you fine. <laughs> Technical difficulty. Sorry about that. So I just heard the last part of uh, the discussion, which was good. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I just, 
some of the things I just, I respect when I see a committee, there is a committee and I wish to not to take, listen to a committee that is there, take their input. So if we don't, we do things and make changes to a department without listening to what the committee has to say or, or have talked to a committee at all, I feel that is not the right path to take. It's, it's like, why do we have a committee at all? Maybe we don't even need a committee. And maybe that's that's the choice that you do. But if you're going to have a, if you have an oversight committee, you, you should, you know, at least ha listen to what they have to say, or they should be part of it. Changes. Amy, just in, in fairness, like I said, I've been the liaison for a while. Um, and as Linda said, this, this has been an ongoing topic of conversation for quite a while. Um, and I think sometimes what happens is, you know, a committee may have a particular a strong opinion about something and they, they certainly have had a very strong opinion about a lot of things. Um, but that their opinion was just in conflict with the professional opinion of um, human resources and, you know, the treasurer's office before. And, you know, it just wasn't resolved. I, I don't think it's that they weren't listened to, they were listened to, but it was just a disagreement. Which is fine. I just never remember seeing the committee at any of the select board meetings or any of this stuff ever discussed. I, I, I mean, I can understand if there's a disagreement and sometimes you agree to disagree, but I've never really remember seeing that there was any, or I never saw it on video. Maybe I missed one, but I don't remember ever have seeing a discussion on anything. Um, I did have seen the um, oversight committee as part of, they were very vocal when it came to the administrative charges and so they have been very vocal about that um but um and and and, and we listened to them and then they changed the um they went ahead we went ahead and, and and gave a little more money um so then when i did what when it was brought to my attention um about this um i just i didn't i was blindsided because i didn't know about it and i was surprised that we you know, that, that I never heard this before. So I, I, I just like, whether or not it's right or wrong, whether or not I agree with the oversight committee, I haven't heard, like, listen to both avenues and, and you should be able to make, just because they say it, shouldn't mean that you have to go with what they say. But I didn't even know that they were heard. Yeah, maybe there was an issue there. I mean, I know that later on our agenda, we have cable oversight committee res resignations. So four members of the cable oversight committee have resigned um, in the past two months. So maybe that was an issue there. Um, it didn't get a lot of direct contact from them regarding this specific issue. Um, but I know that we've talked about this I agree with what Molly said. I remember having multiple conversations with them over the years about this structuring of the director of Hadley Media's um, position. So I, I, just, I don't know what our final verdict is here, but I'd kind of like to move on. So do you guys want to take any kind of vote? How do you guys want to resolve this as a finance committee? Well, I think I think the finance committee, uh, Paul Bob brought it up is that uh, the picture has changed since February 19th when I presented a balanced budget. Um, we are faced with an unprecedented hit to the local economy, to this regional economy, to the national economy. And we clearly have to readjust the FY21 budget um, uh, in order to take into account what we think is going to happen in the next 18 months. Um, so I, 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 I think that the fine, and I don't mean to put words in the finance committee's mouth, but I think it'd be proper for the finance committee to find out how we can balance the budget given the shortfalls that we're currently uh, um, anticipating. Well, as far as the shortfalls that we're looking at, because um, I reviewed, we talked about the revenues a little bit with the financial management team. Uh, so there is going to be quite a, quite a bit that we're going to um, be looking to take out of the expenses. Um, at this time, I think that we should 
not look at doing extra hours, extra people, extra funding. Um, I don't think we should have another, we have um, more people as far as such as a, poli a new police officer. I don't think we should do that. I don't think we should do the $75 uh, or $75,000 going into that other reserve. I don't think we should do the $25,000 going into the unemployment reserve. I don't think we should do the, um, I think we should cut out the human resources. I do not think we should hire uh, that person as a temporary. Um, we've been doing it all these years and we haven't needed, you know, this was the first year we had the um, human resources. We have two, um, would David be staying longer um, and helping out? Um, we do have an extra, you know, uh, person there for a little while, um, an overlap. Yes, you're training, but at the same time, maybe you could help out with some HR. So I think we could cut there and take out the HR for one year um, until we can get back on track. I think we could, um, so there's a lot of areas I, I looking at taking out of the budget, I would think, in my opinion, if I could have some yeah. help. I was gonna just kind of table that and because we were supposed to look more into that in the next uh, part of the meeting, but I feel like right now, maybe something that we could do that's just on the agenda right here is just maybe hear from the school committee about what they think, how their budget's gonna be impacted right now, because that has a big impact on our overall town budget. And I don't know if you guys have any insights right now or anything along the lines of where the school budget is or the direction it's moving in um you know next year or this year or how how everything is impacted um if you have any updates there for us yeah so i think between annie and myself um we can cover this i'm sorry i didn't raise my hand i unmuted i hope that's okay oh, totally fine totally okay fine. cool yeah. um I, and I know that uh, when we met just recently, we also um, agreed to uh, see there was a difference in, I believe it was about 25, 26,000 that we were asked Annie to um, make up the difference in our budget. And we did vote to use school choice funding for that. Um, and we talked in our last meeting about whether um, this situation has produced either more expenses or less expenses. And I think we determined from that meeting that it really was um, kind of a counterbalance. So it's a wash and that, yes, we're going to have some savings from the facilities uh, in terms of we're not utilizing them, um, but we're also not, you know, um, generating revenue on the lunch accounts where, uh, you know, there's, there's not a big, uh, you know, savings or expenditure either way by us not being in the facilities right now. Um, but Annie, do you want to frame that in terms of just where we are now and what we've talked about for the future year? Yes, so Heather, you bring up some really good points. One of the issues is that we have a few revolving accounts. Lunch is one, food services is one, but another big revolving account is the preschool account. And there are a number of positions that are funded out of the preschool account, and that of course will take a big hit. Um, so that's an example of where Heather refers to that uh, counterbalance. And there's also been recommendations from the Department of Revenue and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that we don't just stop paying um, contractors, uh, that it has been recommended that that's not how we proceed. Uh, Chris Desjardins is working with business managers from other districts regionally, from Amherst, Chicopee, in Hampshire and uh, Hamden counties, other districts that utilize some of the vendors that we utilize in order to renegotiate existing multi-year contracts that we have to take into consideration uh, the, this closure and what that means in terms of um, invoices and services rendered. So it isn't, there isn't this massive um, saving savings that we're looking at. I am working close with elementary and secondary education. Uh, thankfully, we did secure a number of grants this year, and um, I am trying to work with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to see under what conditions. So given the fact that we have this closure, uh, a lot of the work that perhaps would have been done 
in session and other employees would have done that. Uh, a lot of that work I will most likely, I have done and will continue to do. So one strategy, if it's allowed in the grant, if we can amend grants to operate as salary offsets, for example, for someone like me, and then hopefully if we can do that, roll some of that money over to be available in um, FY21. Uh, and then of course we are uh, awaiting further direction from, as I said, when I presented to FinCom, further direction from FinCom and from the select board. And I wanna say what I always say, um, I am really clear in a lot of towns, the dynamic between the school department and other departments, particularly FinCom and the select board is tenuous at best in most towns. And that is not the case in Hadley. Um, this is a wonderfully collaborative community where people work really hard to make sure that all departments are adequately, if not well funded. So when I say we're awaiting direction, I never want the community to hear me as saying uh, someone else is going to recommend a reduction or a cut and they're going to be vilified. The truth is that revenues are taking a massive hit. And we expect that you'll have to tell us, unfortunately, this is what you have to work with and, and we'll go from there. But we are quite clear that the town does prioritize and take good care of its schools of all of its departments. So we will, we will proceed with um, passing the budget with the most recent figures that you had given us, David. And I fully expect and accept that those uh, may very well most likely will change. The reason we'll proceed with the public hearing on April 27 is then at least legally, we've done what we need to do to bring a budget to town meeting floor. If on town meeting floor or prior to that, that was reduced for some reason, we're still okay. We've done, if we don't have a public hearing for the school department budget separate from the usual select board business, if we don't do that in advance of town meeting, you can't even vote on our budget. We just won't have a budget going into FY21. Um, so we'll proceed um, as we had planned to. And then, as I said, wait for additional input. And I think we're all waiting for input, right? So there are some, they do anticipate the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education anticipates, I think they said $215 million from the feds in grants to be distributed to school districts right now. Um, and this is to kind of address these revenue shortfalls and, and other things. All the details haven't been released on how the money would be distributed or dispersed and what it could be used for. However, they did say on a recent call, the commissioner said that they're looking to distribute these funds like they distribute Title I funds. So Title I funds, um, the amount that a district receives correlates with uh, the degree of poverty in the community. So that it's not that we don't get anything in Title I, but we don't, I mean, you're talking, so think roughly maybe $50,000, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, uh, as opposed to a district like a Fall River, which may get uh, millions of dollars. Um, but that's logical. I mean, I don't begrudge them that. The logic would be that poor communities uh, are hit harder uh, by the demands of remote learning than more affluent communities. So that's where we stand right now. I don't know if I adequately answered that question, but I'm certainly open to responding to any other questions you might have. And well, if I can no just add one thing. Sorry, Christian. Um, I would just say, I think one of the things that we, if we need to do it, um, and we've done this in the past, if we need to model different scenarios about um, what we would do if, you know, scenario A, scenario B, and scenario C, we'll do it. Um, and I recognize that some of this is unknown and some of it is, you know, where we are now and we don't know where we're going to be in a couple of months. Um, but if that's helpful, you know, I think you've got um, a committed group that is willing to, to do that and be creative where we can, but at least describe what the, what the impact will be. Yeah, and I will just add too with that, there is still, uh, for David and certainly finance committee members and some of the select board, you probably get tired every year of hearing me say, starting in February, there are still a number of unknowns and then the unknowns become known. 
one of the biggest unknowns every year is trying to figure out what our out of district tuition costs may be in the upcoming year. And now that we're not in session, that has also interrupted a lot of those processes the, the way in which, so there's a process, a team makes a determination about placements and those processes have been put on hold. So those unknowns remain unknown. Um, there is certainly some, some modeling we can do, but some of it is also, we still are, are not, some, some expenses are projected, but not certain. Okay, and then the, just the only real payroll, you know, just owning a business. I know the whole payroll protection program that's going on right now for private companies, small businesses, but there's no equivalent program for teacher salaries or anything along those lines. It's all just put on the shoulders of the, the towns and the states. And, you know, there is that one grant opportunity you described, but nothing more than that, that we know yeah. of, correct? No, right now, I don't know of any others. And I'm certainly not keeping up on the municipal finance side of things. So I don't know what opportunities are, may be on the municipal side of things, but um, that's the only one that I have heard of. Of course, we have been instructed to track all of our expenses associated with operating during um, the pandemic, and we have been doing that. Any expenses that we've incurred directly related to the pandemic, we're tracking everything. Um, no, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, DOR, they are essentially of the mind that these were expenses that were budgeted for in FY20. I know that they're not, by saying that, like you were prepared for it, well, also you weren't prepared for this massive, what is it right now that the state is predicting between uh, a three and $5 billion revenue loss at the state level as a result of this. Um, but the, the thinking is that um, these are budgeted expenses and certainly for our employees, um, they're, the, they're still working, right? So we still have virtual learning going on. Um, and so um, they're still working. Okay, thank you. Sure. And uh, yeah, thank I you really, for giving us an update, uh, John. Christian, yeah, yeah. I, I really do have to agree with Amy at, at this point. But we don't know how bad we're going to be by the end of the summer with finances, you know. And she spoke of not hiring the extra police officer, not hiring more firemen, not hi hiring more highway. I mean, if someone quits and you need to replace them, that's probably one thing. But we, before we get in a situation where we're going to have to start laying people off, if it does come to that, we really need to think about that. So can I jump in here for a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, um, so the financial management team uh, met on Tuesday. Uh, I put together a projected revenue, revised revenue uh, forecast for FY21. Uh, we reviewed it. I think that their general consensus was that the revenue forecast was as good as we can get at this point. Um, let me just by saying that we do have a AAA bond rating. And one way of thinking about that is that Standard & Poor thinks that the town of Hadley can survive the Great Depression. So although things are grim, and I don't want to sugarcoat anything, I do think the town is strong enough to get through this and we will get through it eventually. Um, but we did put together the revenue projection and we thought about it, we debated it and it does look like there is a large deficit that we need to uh, overcome. And that's north of $500,000, more like $800,000 shortfall at this point. My job right now in the next couple of days is to redo the budget and make that uh, close that gap. Uh, and at your next meeting, which is next Wednesday, I am hopeful that I'll be able to present you with either a balanced budget or at least a bad a choice of really crummy choices, but uh, the leadership would have to make some decisions as to how to move forward. But we will develop a path to closing that $800,000 shortfall. That $800,000 shortfall
in the first and second quarter of FY21 with epidemiological surges in July, August, and again in November, December, and each of those based upon a 60-day duration for a resurgence of the coronavirus. I think that the resurgence is as as horrible it is to contemplate. I think that we are witnessing a patchwork approach to combating this disease, and I don't think that's going to serve us well. I think that that there's a patchwork across the Commonwealth just based upon the nature of how the Commonwealth is put together as well as regionally and nationally. With respect to the uh, state aid, I've asked Senator Comerford to keep uh, cities and towns harmless for state aid. Or if they can't do that, then come up with a joint resolution between the House and the Senate as to what the state aid for cities and towns might be. I reminded them that that was the approach that was taken back in 2008 during the housing crisis, the, the market uh, crisis associated with collapse of the housing market. Um, so uh, she seemed to hear that very clearly. The tax revenues are pretty much driven by formulas. The assessors have revised downward the new growth projection by about $28,000. And then we have the enterprise fund administrative chargebacks amended upwards by about $59,000 based upon the selectmen vote from the uh, couple of weeks ago. So that is the basis on which I put together the sh projected shortfall. Um, I think that there are a number of things that we can do, however painful, to close the gap. And I will present something as quickly as I can. Hey, David, does um, <clears throat> your projections um, assume that there's going to be an increase in the tax rate for FY21? Um, I can't say at this point. I think that depends entirely upon the deployment of free cash. Okay, because I would just like to make my thoughts known that it needs to stay the same as FY20 based on what's going on, because not only do the individuals not need to pay more, but neither do the businesses that are already suffering need to pay more on their commercial rates as well. Yeah, because a portion of them are going to be closing anyway, if, if it does get that bad. We really need to, to think this thing through, the, the taxes, the water, the sewer, uh, People can't pay anymore. Well, we've already had this discussion time and time again. People are at their limits and now people are out of work. They don't have the money to pay their bills. It, it, it's coming around and, and it's not a good looking sight. So David, and with respect to the tax rate, there are so many variables that I don't have a good handle on right now that go into setting the tax rate, but. Uh, I'll present the information as clearly as I can with respect to any potential impact. Okay, thanks. Okay, I think that is a good uh, overview of this tri-board section of the conversation. Um, I don't know if we have anything else in particular to talk about this right now, but that kind of gives everybody a, a feel for what's coming, I guess. so. Uh, David, I don't know if you have anything else to add on this particular part of the agenda. What, uh, what, what are the plans? What are anybody's thoughts on the capital improvements? Are we tabling most of those for right now? Will that save us any uh, money for a year, 18 months, like David's saying? So the first thing I think we should do with respect to capital is defer as much of that to the fall town meeting as we can. Um, there are there are three or four items on the capital plan that I think are time sensitive and we should give serious consideration to uh, funding. That would be the emergency generator for the public safety complex. 
That would be the fencing that's mandated by the Department of Environmental Protection for the water tanks. And that would be the tech school technology in order to keep them on track. Um, I'd have to go back and take a look, closer look at the capital plan to see if there's anything else that uh, could not put, be put off for six months. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know we're trying to keep that tight anyway this year, so we're trying second, to keep that low. So the second thing we should be thinking about with the capital is not spending cash for capital, but instead infusing $100,000 into the debt service within the levy and then use borrowing within the levy in order to uh, fund your capital plan as much as you can. That'll give you a better bang for the buck and it will give you a capital plan uh, so that you don't emerge from this thing uh, uh, with a crushing obligation with respect to your capital plan. As I've said many times before, it's not the shot that you set, you uh, sink, it's the shot you set yourself up for. So we should be thinking a couple of uh, fiscal years uh, when we put together the plan for this coming fiscal year. Okay, thank you. I'm just gonna skip here to uh, Deb, I know we voted on the, the human resource director temporary replacement, but she's been waiting for us here and I figured I'd just give her a chance to, to speak. Um, I know you missed uh, that portion of the meeting when we went through uh, the human resource uh, temporary position, but uh, based on your resume and letter of intent, it looks like you're well qualified to fill the needs of the position. So. Uh, would be great to have you on board. So I don't know if you want to say anything uh, in regards to the position. Thanks, Christian. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm really kind of excited and looking forward to working with uh, David and Ed for the little bit that I can before he leaves and, and with the board. I have you know, 36 years of human resources experience experience kind of a broad range of human resources experience and I think it can be put to good use in Hadley. Um, I started my local government career as a resident of Hadley uh, living next door to the Hibbards in uh, North Hadley where every afternoon in the early summer I'd pluck my 75 cents down into the cigar box and get my asparagus and that was dinner. Um, I've worked in small towns, large towns, uh, most recently retiring early in order to take care of my uh, aging mom uh, from the town of Amherst. And I think I'll just be able to kind of come right in and, and uh, be a contributor right away. Great, well, thank you and thank you for your interest and look forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, um, now we can go into our COVID-19 update, uh, annual town meeting, annual town elections, and our, our fiscal year 21 budget adjustments. I know we've been talking to, about that a little bit, but uh, a few things in here as well. So uh, the first thing is just, uh, reviewing the town of Hadley's response and plans for dealing with COVID-19. I would be surprised if the fire chief were just hanging out on this meeting right now. So David, do you have any updates from the unified command team? Uh, basically, you know, we are posting uh, daily uh, situ situation report to the Hadley website, www.hadleyma.org where you can find all the latest information, but I don't know if there's anything else that we want to mention. Yeah, so the Unified Command has uh, scaled back its meetings. It was meeting daily, including weekends um, for an hour. Um, things have stabilized with respect to um, the situation in Western Massachusetts enough that we are now meeting Tuesdays and Thursdays and other times as needed. 
uh, we continue to have uh, problems with communication. Uh, uh, all communication having to do with the coronavirus and its impacts upon the town should be going through unified command. Uh, we still have problem with people talking independently uh, and that creates confusion and delay. But uh, so if people can be mindful that we're trying to present uh, coordinated, con accurate and timely advice and um, if everything could be vetted by the, uh, the unified command, that would be good. That unified command consists of the chief, fire chiefs, uh, Mike Spankable, myself, Christian Stanley, David Phil, Molly Keegan, and a member of the Board of Health, either Emma Dragon or Rich Tessier. Uh, so if you have something that you want to communicate to the outside world about uh, coronavirus, please see one of them and we'll uh, We'll jump right on it and we'll get it accurate and documented uh, information out to uh, the world. I'd just like to uh, ask uh, David, is all the personal protection equipment, uh, are we in pretty good shape with the fire, the police, DPW, highway? Uh, do we have everything they need to keep the employees safe along with the public? I know that the uh, Board of Health just recently got a shipment of uh, PPEs. Uh, I think that's dedicated to the uh, to the, uh, the DPW. Um, uh, I think that there are shortages of, of supplies uh, nationwide, so I don't think we're we're 100% covered at this point. Uh, if you have a particular need do let us know and we will uh, see what we can do about getting that filled as quickly as possible. Hey, David, just one quick thing to add that came out. Um, the state DPH is uh, taking the numbers um, out of the, the hands of indiv individual communities, which were previously allowed to make that decision to release the numbers or not. As of today, they're going to be releasing them weekly. Um, it, as long as the community has more than five five cases, I believe is the cutoff. So um, as of yesterday, Hadley has 15 positive cases per the state DPH. Right. The last time we heard that we had nine. So that was about a week ago. Thank you, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't hear that either. Um, and one other thing I just wanted to note is that we have been getting some support from our legislat legislators uh, David Nixon and myself were on a call yesterday with Joe Comerford and, uh, you know, expressed a lot of the issues we're having in town and we got a lot of positive uh, feedback from her office and I just want to thank them for taking the time to, to talk to us and other towns in the surrounding area. Okay. Um, Next here is considering a meeting date for the annual town election. It's currently set for Saturday, May 16th uh, from noon to 8 p.m. at Hopkins Academy. And I think we just need to discuss the preparations for the election and evaluate any of the coronavirus information that we know. Um, you know, basically, do we keep this election date or do we move this date once again? I personally am in favor of keeping this date, but I don't know how it will impact the schools and what we do um, with the schools. I think we could do something with the election to have people wait outside the school and kind of control the traffic flow, similar to what uh, a lot of supermarkets and different things are doing right now. But um, I don't know what the rest of the board thinks or if we would want to move it. I also don't know if Jessica is uh, on the call um, about ordering ballots and, and that kind of thing, what we have to do. Can I ask um, Dr. McKenzie if there's any indication whether or not school will resume uh, this year or wait till next year? There is nothing right now, but I anticipate the governor will have an announcement um, at early next week at the latest. I anticipate that by the end of this week, the governor will have announced something. 
What that is, I don't know, but and, I, that's what I anticipate we'll hear from the governor. And I don't know if we need to decide this this week or if we can wait next week based on the lead time of the ballots. Does anybody have any? Uh, uh, yeah, so I, uh, on that? So I talked to uh, uh, Jen, uh, Jessica Spanknable. Um, if we're going to have the elections on the 16th, then we need to make a decision tonight, sign the warrant, and she can get the ballots printed in time. Um, and I'm hearing from the community that, uh, that, that they would like to see the, the elections proceed. Uh, I think that there is some concern that um, uh, any further delay is, is you know, not in the best interest of the entire town. I'm, uh, Absolutely, I agree with that. I've had a lot of the complaints myself, and uh, we need to, we really need to stress to uh, fire and police if we can get a good organization together on whatever we're going to do for the social distancing and for the facility. So it, it's, we're going to need to get into it. I, I am for leaving it on the 16th. And I would just encourage people to do a, a mail-in ballot if they can, an absentee ballot. I mean, that prevents you from having to go to the voting um, on that exactly. day. Exactly. So. As many as possible, please apply for it and, and get them and, and vote. I'm also in favor of uh, keeping it on the 16th. I think that it should be in the full gym rather than the uh, cafeteria or the half gym like we tend to do so there's more room to uh, social distance and if we have to hand out masks to people that are heading in the boat um, I'm sure we can find people to do that and make it happen yeah. should I happily make a motion that we stick with the May 16th election date as it stands and do everything we can to encourage uh, mail-in voting I'll second that okay and uh, yeah, a little bit of a gamble. I think, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with schools, but I feel like it's worth uh, just going for it right now and, and trying to adjust the best we can. Um, the only other thing would be, you know, making sure there's a candidate's night and that kind of thing before May 16th that that can happen. But, uh, you know, if we decide on this, hopefully the Mother's Club can, can make that adjustment somehow. I don't know even if it's okay for us to offer uh, our Zoom to do that i don't know but, well, i was gonna say maybe we can zoom candidates night and uh put it on tv5 yeah, i see actress. jane waving there so maybe she knows more because she's a candidate maybe she's been in touch with the um mother's club about that i was no, just gonna say oh i'm jane i'm sorry to cut you off i was just gonna say john harrison from hadley media and i have been in contact with the hadley mother's club about setting up the zoom uh candidates night what I was going to say is because it's um, absentee ballot and it can be voted at any time, I think that the candidates night should be a lot sooner than the week before the election. I also think that the select board should encourage the Gazette to run their candidates profiles sooner than later, just so that all the candidates are properly known to the people who are voting. Yeah, that's fair. Yep. And question two there yeah. or comment. Just to say thank you for looking into doing this via Zoom. I think that that would, our custodial staff would very much appreciate uh, not having large crowds in the schools until the schools are uh, reopened. And even then, um, they would appreciate that. So thank you very much for looking into using Zoom instead. Ann, I, I got a question for you about uh, cleaning. Would it be better for you folks to have it in the cafeteria where it's a tile floor and it's easier to clean rather than a gymnasium? Or do you, uh, do you have anything from the uh, custodians uh, to that respect? I don't, but one of the things I like about us attending meetings in our home with our computer keyboards, I just emailed Jeff Mish and Chris and said, looks like it's going to be in the gym. Looks like the whole gym. So people are apart. What do we need to sanitized by uh, Monday, okay. assuming things are back in. So I just emailed them to ask them that. All right. Because that, that's going to be an, a little important point here when 
when we get that far for the election. And could we ask, um, since Jennifer and Hadley Media are already in touch with the Mothers Club, could we ask Jennifer to um, ask them about pushing that date earlier than the Monday before? Um, I can, I'll, I'll circle that email back around and see where they are. And as early as possible feels like the right choice here. Or, you know, great. probably two weeks before. All right, I'll check in with John Harrison and um, I believe Denise Devine is still the president. So I'll check in with both of them. Uh, Jane's got her hand up over there, I think. Okay, I think that if possible, that the Mother's Club thing should happen coinciding with when ballots are first available because if people start getting their ballots, they're gonna vote and send them back. And if you wait a month or three weeks until people have had ballots, because I talked to Jessica today and she said, if you vote for this tonight, she should probably have ballots sometime next week. Oh, I didn't know it was that fast, okay. That's good. Great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would. I would absolutely go along with that. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds reasonable. And it gives people plenty of time to get the absentee ballots, so we don't run into a big roadblock at at the election. So right. may, I, may I offer a friendly amendment to the motion that uh, it includes the polling hours from 12 noon to 8 p.m. and uh, that the select board sign the election warrant and that they authorize use of the signature stamp to make that signature happen. Stamp it. To, uh, extend polling hours rather than just 12 to eight. It seems like uh, it would be an option to space things out. I know we have a lot of dead time during the day, but. I would wanna more minimize the polling hours, you know, just so that we're minimizing exposure, but I don't know. Yeah. But the exposure is people packing into a room, not people walking into a room to vote. So to me, it would make sense to give people the most possible time to pass out the voters throughout the day. Excuse me. Everybody in. I think this, isn't this a bylaw issue, David? Because this came up before why we only have it from 12 to 8 for the local election. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm racking my memory right now as to the how late you can go. I think 8 o'clock is the cutoff, but you can... You can start earlier in the day if you need to. How about 10 to 6? Is there a 10 to 8? Is there eight? It, does it have to be open for eight hours or what, what does a bylaw say? We could also just vote now and then do the polling hours next week and maybe get input from Jessica what she thinks just to move it along. Let me let me give uh, Jessica a call because okay. we're in Paul, the Paul had a comment here. I'm so already calling her. Okay, Susan might be on the phone with her. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be guessing on this okay. one. Go ahead, Paul. If you have a comment, just, it, it, why can't we just mail everybody a ballot? And if they want to mail it in that day, why don't we put a couple of tents up, have them drive right up? They put it right into the machine. You mark off who they are, and you do it as a drive up. Nobody goes in the building. To do it by cars, so and maybe we have to pick a place to do that where we can have enough of a queue. My understanding is we can't mail everybody a ballot based on mass state law. I know other states okay. have done that, but based on what uh, the clerk was saying, that's not possible. Could we do it as a drive up, but just an outdoor thing? They go through one booth, they say their name, you hand them the ballot, they pull into an area, when they're ready, they just drive out, they go to a parking lot. Maybe we borrow one of the malls, see if we can use their, you know, the Hampshire Mall for or, or the other mall is a place where they drive up. You have a station where they get their thing. You pass it through the window. They fill it out with the marker. They drive over to another station with their car, roll their window down, put it right into the machine. You can have them mounted and out there in tents and boom. Yeah, I know, I know so there's certain have... legal requirements. So of where the okay. polling Just place has got to be. So. so Jessica's on Susan's phone. I'm going to unmute Susan and we'll be able to hear Jessica. Go ahead, Sue. Okay, Jess. Hi, everybody. Hello. Go ahead, so, Jess. I'm sorry, I missed the last few minutes. So what was the question directed towards me? So, Did the polling hours have to be from noon to eight? 
I, I'm just for eight hours. We're already reducing it from the normal 11. And especially if there's going to be restrictions on how many people we allow in at once, I would suggest the eight hours. Can we do 10 to mm -hmm. eight or? My, qu my question was 10 to six rather than 12 to eight. I'd have to double check for you on that, John, but I would suggest the noon to eight. All right. Because being a Saturday, I, I think if we could get it done a little bit earlier, it'd be good for the counters and everything else. But I think there's a requirement to how late they can be open. Okay. I can double, well, I can double check that for you tomorrow. Well, that's what I'm saying. If it, if it's just the minimum hours that we're dealing with, we you know a, a ten to six would work, and it would give you people a little bit of relief on the counting side. You can get out a little earlier too, possibly. You know. Um, uh, the counting afterwards really has nothing to do with it. It's getting the people that are the count the checkers. I am unmuted. So. <clears throat> And my concern was uh, again my concern is if you're going to limit the number of people in the vote at a particular time you're going to need a lot of people. somebody's on the street folks <laughs> i mean right now we're already planning on being in the cafeteria and if we can even have the check in or check out tables outside that space, we can allow more people in. It's totally at your discretion. John, my concern was not the, you know, 10, 10 to six or 12 to eight. I just, I, I think if we could, and I hate to put more onto Jessica and her counters and whatnot, but um, if you want to get a thousand people in, in 10 hours versus eight hours, uh, they're easier to get through. It encourages more people to show up, and there's going to be less people packed in the same amount of space at the same at the same time. So that's where I was coming from. I whatever you guys decide, whatever the select board decides tonight, I will make happen. Yeah, I think maybe we should just set the date and then kind of let the details work out. Give the details of how the day looks more time. You have, you have the time, Christian. You can't do that. You have to set a time. Oh, we have to set a time. Okay. We have to set a time. Okay. What What do we want for a time? Uh, what do you think is best for the workers and everything? Because that's something too. Is the poll workers, you know, eight hour, eight hours plus there versus, you know, I don't know how long it takes to set up, take down, and everything else. Yeah. Who's going to feel comfortable? I I will always have backup. So again, whatever you decide, I will make happen. All right. I don't know if a motion's already been made, but I'd like to make the motion that we hold the election on May 16th, uh, May 16th and that the polling hours are from 10 to 8 in order to allow more people to have a chance to vote and to increase social distancing. And uh, I guess it'll be held at uh, Hopkins Academy as usual. Second. And I'm sorry, David, I just didn't catch what did you say for the time <laughs> broke up on my end. I don't know if it's uh, yeah, 10 to 8 for the polling hours. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Anybody? All right. All those in favor? I don't know if we have to do a roll call. So just go ahead to take your vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. So we're 10 to 8, possibly, then? I had a little technical difficulties here. Yeah, 10 to 8. OK. And Jess is satisfied with that? Uh, I'll get the ball rolling, guys. She'll make it happen. <laughs> Might be looking for volunteers. <clears throat> all right, next. Um, You're all set? Yeah, we're all set. Thank you for joining us. So now we are asked to set a date for the annual town meeting, uh, previously postponed from May 7th to a date to be determined. Uh, we, did David, David, did Joyce want to be take part in this? 
Um, can we defer this because this has everything to do with when school is going to be uh, yeah. uh, closing. So yeah. we won't hold that for another week. So can we defer this for a week? Yes, let's do that before we hear from the governor uh, about schools. Okay, now we'll review provisions contained within chapter 53 of the acts of 2020, which allow the select board greater flexibility to pass a provisional budget, use free cash and undesignated enterprise reserves by an annual town meeting held after June 30th, amortize fiscal year 2020 shortfalls, um, postpone due dates for real, real estate tax bills. I know that one we wanted to table right now. Um, optionally waive interest and penalties for late payments. I wanted to table that for right now. Um, remove the threat of terminating municipal services for late payment up to June 30th. Um, defer required municipal actions on permits until 45 days after the lifting of the state emergency. Um, so there's a lot, that's a lot to digest right there. Uh, David, do you have any better grasp on that than I do to explain some of the finer points of passing a provisional budget, using free cash, um, amortizing the shortfalls? Uh, those, I think those are kind of our top three to discuss right now. Yes, A, A B, and C there um, uh, are very handy and we're very grateful for the legislature and the governor for providing us with those tools to help us in a very uncertain time. Um, in general, we should, um, we should uh, not use these unless our backs are absolutely against the wall. Uh, provisional uh, budget means that we're going to have to have a series of town meetings, uh, use of free cash, uh, and undesignated uh, enterprise reserves. Um, we should only do that if we cannot hold a, a annual town meeting prior to June 30th, and then amortizing the uh, the shortfalls over a three-year period. I don't think we should do that if we ha if we can avoid uh, uh, doing that. That's in effect adding debt uh, to ourselves. Um, the reason why we're asking that we postpone the due date on the tax bills and the waiving of the interest and penalties for late payments is that we're trying to do a cash flow analysis to make sure that we have enough cash on hand to even offer those um, those uh, 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 services to the residents uh, and still make some of the payments that we are required to make in July. Um, there's some debt service, there's some one-time payments that come up that are pretty hefty. Uh, I certainly think that uh, we don't we don't want to terminate uh, municipal services such as sewer water for somebody who's struggling to pay a bill. Uh, I certainly think that um, um, any action that uh, is required on permits involving uh, such things as consent or um, or uh, other kinds of uh, time frames associated with uh, things with the planning board, things with the zoning board of appeals, things with the um, conservation commission. Certainly, those things uh, can uh, we can wait uh, and not have to worry about those uh, um, automatic approvals if the action is not uh, taken within a particular time frame on a particular uh, topic. So I think there's a lot there that we can make use of and some things that we are still studying and some things that are handy to have just in case, but we shouldn't go there first. David, can we make it clear to people that we're not going to turn off water and sewer um, for missed payments or late payments at this point? I mean, obviously, you know, interest and penalties may still accrue, but I think they're with water bills coming out uh, very soon, I think. Um, if they haven't already, um, you know, there's quite a lot of people out of work that would probably like to know that their water's not going to be shut off if they are struggling for a little bit. Right. Exactly. And we're, we're happy. Susan's office is always happy to work with people to uh, come up with payment agreements. Uh, and we've always tried to work with people on that. And certainly in this particular time, that would not be uh, good for the town to uh, be uh, demanding payment from people who can't uh, 
make those payments and threatening to turn off their water or sewer or other services. If I can just, if I can just interject, we don't turn off anybody's water. Um, the remedy prescribed by law is to lean it to the real estate, third quarter real estate of the next fiscal year. So that is not a worry at all. The water and sewer, I agree with David, Phil, you know, we should really, uh, um, the interest and penalty should be void right now on the water and sewer. The taxes, uh, I agree with you, uh, uh, Sue, you know, uh, I mean, you got to pay as much as you can on the taxes also. But, uh, you know, it's it's just a major burden for everyone right now. People that are all, all unemployed and uh, it's just a bad situation getting worse here. The next water bill coming out uh, will be issued May 1st to June 1st. So as long as all of the rest of the water is paid, um, there won't be any interest in penalties until after June 15th anyways. Any idea how many people haven't paid the last water bill? Not off the top of my head. I can have 50, that. I can have that information. Over half or? Oh God, no, not even close. So it, it's it's already showing now. No, no, no. I, I'm saying most of them are paid, John. Oh, oh, okay. It's kind of the said, usual. It's kind of the usual suspects who just have myself. Paid. Myself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think the water is paid, John. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, I just got the receipt too. Thank you. Yes. Okay, any any comments from the finance committee on any of those strategies for, you know, kind of dealing with this crisis? I don't know if Amy or anyone else from the finance committee has any input on those. I, I agree with the uh, decision. We should, we should delay all that, any, any penalties of interest. And I do think people need to know that we're not cutting them off. Yeah. I agree with letting people know that we're not going to cut them off. Agreed. Communication is important. I agree. And I think that Sue does an excellent job already at uh, working with people. So um, she would know about it if we're having people in trouble. They usually will reach out. Okay, great. Uh, next is uh, COVID-19 related is the select board will review and ratify the intermunicipal agreement for sheltering first responders in a Hadley hotel. Uh, the, the fire chief, uh, Spanknabel and emergency management director uh, will be on hand to discuss and answer any questions. I don't know if he is here now, um, but uh, basically he's done a lot of work, uh, uh, intermunicipal agreement with a lot of other towns to uh, procure a hotel in Hadley for first responders that have COVID conditions can can shelter at. And uh, this is just to ratify that agreement that he's he's been working with. I think we should do it. David, do you have any additional information about it? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did an expedited procurement on this. We had two hotel groups uh, bid on the uh, the proposal. One came in with a room rate of seventy five dollars with a five room minimum. Another one came in with a reduced rate, but it had a ten room minimum, which uh, overall the cost uh, was higher. Uh, so our hotel uh, uh, families have been very responsive. We, uh, we signed the agreement, um, and uh, we now our last time I heard, we have seven first responders uh, uh, practicing quarantine in the hotel. Uh, I recommend that we go ahead and sign this up. The, the more the communities that join this, the lower our costs will be. These costs are going to be 
reimbursable through MEMA. Yeah, I was just going to ask through the Warren system or MEMA, they're going to fund it eventually. Yeah, we got at least 75% of the cost covered. All right. I just wanted to say that um, I know Chief to fight through a lot of red tape with the state and MEMA and other places to get this done. And uh, he was able to pull it, pull it together for this region. And so I'll give him a lot of credit for that. Um, and for people that are wondering, the reason why we're not giving specifics is for security purposes. So that's why we're being talking in general terms about a hotel. I'd like to make a motion that we ratify that contract as presented by the chief. Second. Any further discussion on that? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And yeah, the chief did a lot of work on this. So, you know, he really helped our community and just all the surrounding communities. So uh, a lot of credit goes to him. Uh, next on our agenda, select board will review the three building projects and discuss whether to continue construction. Uh, select board will review the force majeure provisions of the con construction contracts, timing of additional borrowing, impacts on project library grant revenues, impact on adjoining municipal facilities, and other financial impacts. Again, I just wanted to skip over this for tonight. Um, however, I just wanted to say that uh, there was some concern about whether these projects were deemed essential or not. And yesterday on the call with Senator Comerford's office on a follow-up, <coughs> Um, all right, on the call, I mentioned this issue, and then I got a follow-up from uh, the senator's office, and basically it says that the governor has said that only essential construction projects should proceed during this time. In this case, the town gets to be the arbiter of whether the project is essential or non-essential. A town council could advise with regard to what process the town should follow for these determinations. Um, but there's a town in Winthrop, and the Winthrop town manager has made decisions on essential versus non-essential construction projects, but there is no state agency making essential or non-essential decisions with regard to specific projects, and that's up to the town. And so it's really up to the select board or the town administrator who makes that determination. And um, we just have to have a clear understanding of why a project merits that classification. So I just want to kind of give that guidance, but not really get into it too much because Joyce is here tonight and she has a big part on the fire substation project. So I think we should wait until she can join us to talk about all these projects before we make a decision. But um, you know, I think we have some clear guidance from the Senator's office about what is essential and non-essential. I would say the, the fire station is about the most essential out of all three projects right now at this point uh, for emergency services. All right. And next, we'll discuss our application for emergency funding through the Community Development Block Grant Program as administered by Housing and Urban Development. Um, Still writing the guidelines for these funds, but in general, eligible costs normally found in these programs are expected to remain in place. So economic development, job creation, retention, senior support programs, and emergency response. Um, David, do you have more ideas on the CDBG grants here? Yes, yeah, so I, um, I, um... I asked uh, the Haley Wood, uh, the senior services director, if she had any particular ideas. Um, I know, Molly, you're going to be talking to the Amherst Area of Chamber of Commerce about small and large business loan programs. I talked to Chris uh, Dunphy of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who's going to be the pass-through agency. The regional planning agencies are the pass through uh, uh, agencies for these monies and asked them about some of the uh, um, criteria and whether these projects 
that we're exploring would fit within it. Find that um, that is common for communities to that are joining the age-friendly and dementia-friendly networks um, to. in order to, uh, uh, um, let's skip in here, do a thorough demographic profile of uh, the seniors in the town. It'd be a key building block for identifying the most pressing needs experienced by older adults in town and would be a roadmap for planning how to improve uh, life in general. Getting the study done would be about $30,000. I did talk to Pine, as I said, Chris Dumphy, he said that absolutely that would be an eligible uh, uh, project. Uh, so DHCD has not finished writing their, their criteria yet. Uh, so we still have a little bit more time to plan this uh, through, but uh, I think that um, doing the loan program that Molly is gonna be exploring, doing the, uh, the demographic survey of Hadley seniors as recommended by Haley Wood uh, are two things that we certainly would want to bring to uh, the uh, uh, PVPC for their use in soliciting funds from DHCD. Does anybody have other things that they would like to see federal money spent on? And we had uh, our planner in the budget originally. Is there anything out of this grant where that could position might be paid for the first year or something through a grant since it has to do with economic development and job creation? Is there anything along those lines or does it is it able to fund specific salaries? I think I think that that would be a uh, uh, eligible cost. Is there anything on the state or federal side for similar to what they did with uh, Mike, uh, our fire chief, was a three-year program, uh, and then the town picked it up at 20%, 50%, 75% or something like that? Like the safer grant? Is that what that was? Yeah. Yeah, safer grant. Anything else on that? As soon as DHCD comes out with their guidelines, I'll uh, bring this back to the board and we can uh, we can tighten up our uh, list of, uh, of funding priorities. Okay. And now uh, select board and finance committees are asked to review draft annual town meeting warrant. Do we, do we, should we do that right now since everybody's here or are we, is that changing at all? Would it be helpful if I, if I revise the, the warrant and um, in conjunction with balancing the budget? I think it's all yeah. one piece. I think it's going to change quite a bit. I would think if you if you're already looking at five hundred thousand dollars, David, it, it's gonna it's it's gonna affect a lot of it. Yeah, I think it might be a better use of your time if I uh, um, took a turn at it and then came back with uh, with something that I think is um, um, within our means for the next eighteen months. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. And Randy, you had a quick comment. Uh, I can't hear you, Randy. I don't know if you're muted. I thought you guys were responsible for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the greeting section of the town meeting, the uh, statement is that the meeting to be held in Hopkins Academy. Uh, I'm a member of the Massachusetts Moderators Association. There's been lots of talk because of social distancing of not being able to have a meeting indoors and possibly having it outdoors. I'm not suggesting that's what we're going to do, 
but I think if you change the word in to at, that will allow us to have the, the meeting anywhere on the school site rather than be uh, made to go inside. And again, I, I don't know where we're going to be at that point in time, but at least it leaves it open for us. Yeah, if we could get some kind of sound system and announcement to have it in a baseball field or soccer field or something or in a parking lot. I've seen uh, on the news they've had it in the parking lots before. So, One of the things that we raised with Senator Comerford is the possibility of changing our quorum requirements during states of emergency. Uh, right now we have a quorum requirement of 100 people. Um, and... Uh, if uh, we had a state of emergency, uh, and this is a perfect example of the kind of emergency that would be, it would be impossible today to hold a town meeting with social distancing with 100 people, um, except that we did it outside in a, in a great big field. Um, so uh, would, the, would you all be at all interested in changing the quorum requirements in states of emergency? No, I would not. I think that's a touchy situation. Again, I've been reading a lot and hearing a lot about that stuff. Uh, all the towns in the state are struggling with it. And if you get it at the right amount and you get the right crowd, you're, you're not going to have a back and forth discussion. It's going to be one-sided potentially. And that, quite frankly, scares me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. In, that, in, in the meeting, I told uh, the senator, I was like, we could execute a Zoom meeting, but there's no way it would be interactive. I mean, just it's not a good platform to have something along the lines of town meeting. So we have to do something in person. And I don't know what that looks like right now, but I agree with everything you guys are saying. So I think if we can do anything to loosen the language where we could have it in a field or in the parking lot or a drive through or whatever it is, or drive in then uh, that would be good. I mean, with all reality, Randy, we're probably looking at it after June 1st now anyway, um, within a couple of weeks in June, if everything works out, uh, if everything looks safe. Uh, and then a, a parking lot meeting of 100 people. I don't know. I, I think there's enough room in Hopkins parking lot, but it may not be in it. Uh, they, there's an issue with if you have a, a people together for longer than a short time, the six foot social distancing is not considered enough. Someone's saying as much as 20 feet between people. So, I mean, again, we're going to have to deal with this when the time comes, but I just want everybody to be aware that it's out there. And to Christian's point, we can have a meeting wherever we want to. We don't have to have it in a building. If, if the warrant says it's going to be in the parking lot at Hopkins Academy or at Hopkins Academy, we can do it anywhere at Hopkins Academy. So we just want to make it so that it's uh, uh, the, available the, for the everybody place, who wants to come. The place will be the same, <laughs> just the location at the place will be changed. Yeah, Correct. So, so one thing that I think we should think about is, uh, okay, so... Um, Senator Cumberford was talking about putting uh, town meetings online or doing them uh, through uh, remote participation. Uh, everybody in that conference call was not able to do that today or this year. Um, but we might want to think about uh, the kinds of things that we would put in place for perhaps being able to conduct a town meeting electronically in a five-year period. Well, I, I would have to see what the technology would be in five years. Right now, I, I don't like the, the potential. Yeah, I, I, I know. Just, go ahead, Randy. There have been other, I mean, just trying to vote and things like that remotely it, it hasn't worked so I, I i'm really concerned that that would be a, a problem i think it's gonna if we try to do it too soon we're gonna disappoint a lot of people in town who aren't tech savvy and maybe don't even have computers so i think it's something we should uh you know take those steps very very cautiously 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say is how can we be inclusive if it's electronic, you know, I think that limits people so Okay, anything else on that the warrant or town. Uh, David, did you note that change for the greetings that Randy wants to do. I mean, do we need to vote on that or no, will you just be able to change that? I'll be able to change it. And then when we're ready to sign the warrant, you'll, you'll vote on it. Okay. I realize that I did skip over um, public comment. So I don't know if anybody's here for public comment that wants to say anything. I can always just do that real quick. I would say if you do have a public comment and if you have video, please just turn on your video right now and wave and we can open up your microphone. I don't know, is there anybody that's just called in, Jennifer, that we know of? I'm looking now. Uh, Joanne Konichny is waving her hand. Oh, Joanne is waving her hand? Okay, okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. So um, I think we skipped over the um, library report and we had a question that I had asked you this morning, um, a specific question about cost uh, of library closure. So specifically the trustees wanted to know about the language in the contract. If for some reason our project gets shut down, it doesn't matter the reason. I'm not saying we're shutting down or if, if someone gets uh, sick and the job has to be shut down and there's a cost differential, we wanted to know if a lawyer was able to review our contract, is there insurance that covers this or would it be expected to come out of our contingency? We're just trying to be prepared and know. I, and I wondered if there was an answer to that. So I did have the uh, KP law take a look at the uh, at the two um, two contracts the the con general contractor and the architect. Um, there are financial penalties. Um, I'm reluctant to talk about this in open meeting. I think this should be handled in executive session because it involves legal strategy. Oh, sorry, my dog barked and I muted myself. So should we just call and talk to you about it? I just, we just wanna make sure that all the decisions we make are thoughtful of the town um, and, and what could happen. Um, we're not asking to shut down a project or anything like that. We just wanna make good decisions. So um, how should we just call you and talk to you about it or talk, talk to the lawyer about it? I think that this is something that the select board should talk about next week and we should put, uh, schedule an executive session about it. Okay, that yeah, would be because, good. Yeah, I think we're going to run into the same problem, Joanne, uh, with the library and the senior center right now at this point. Uh, like I said, I, I think the uh, fire station needs to continue on because it's an essential uh, building right now for for the town and uh, we, we still don't know where we're at with North Hadley Hall, but it would just be a safer and, and a better site if it was opened and we could uh, utilize it right now. Yeah, I, I'm not actually questioning about whether it stays open or shut. I feel like that's your decision to make, but um, I, I, and I'm not expressing an opinion about it. I just, for us, I, well, I'd love it if you could consider yeah. and let us know so that and every it's, decision it's we all, make is the best. Yeah. It's also in the governor hands right now because he's reviewing whether to close down yeah. some of these projects or not too. So the question is more about the money and where it would yeah. come from. That's the question yeah. for us. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you let we us got it. So we'll do the executive session next week Wait. and hopefully we'll have some legal opinions by then and we can, we can uh, give you guys an update. Yeah. Give us some guidance. That would be awesome. Uh, Thank we'll you. see if, yeah, yeah, we'll be in touch about it. Thank you. That's what we can do, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else for any other public comments? Wave your hand or whatnot. I'm not seeing anybody. I don't think anybody is on the phone, so I'm gonna just <clears throat> proceed with us moving forward. Um, so the next one is the MOU, Water and Wastewater Intermunicipal Agreement with Town of Amherst. Uh, 
David, Phil, would you like to explain it to us since you've done a lot of work on this and uh, looks like a great thing for us to proceed with? So maybe you can fill sure. us all in. <clears throat> so um, we've had a informal agreement with Amherst to supply each other with water when our systems were undergoing maintenance or other you know, emergency situations. We've uh, provided manpower back and forth um, to help each other out over the years. Uh, so the water agreement specifically formalizes this arrangement, minimum callback periods, um, who's in charge, how billing's handled, things like that, um, and also allows us to cooperate on other projects long term that may involve water and water supplies. Um, so, so nothing too groundbreaking with, with this uh, agreement, just kind of formalizing arrangements. Um, as far as the sewer agreement, um, this is going to allow us to sh uh, share our GIS data with Amherst and their engineering staff since they have engineers on staff, um, you know, full time. And we are looking at the possibility of sending some of our sewage flow um, to Amherst to be treated possibly at a cheaper rate than what we're paying here in Hadley and how that could be accomplished by interconnecting our systems. Right now, our sewer systems are not interconnected in any way, so there would be some sort of cost associated with this, but basically this is just allowing us to explore these possibilities as we approach capacity of the plant and looking at um, you know, probably, I don't know, I've heard up to $30 million in plant expansion or plant um, overhaul expenses uh, as, as we near our, our sewer capacity, so. <clears throat> Okay, great. Uh, so can I just have a motion to accept these two MOUs for sewer and water? I think Molly, you're muted. <laughs> I saw you talking, but. That would be a problem. So I'll make a motion to accept the two MOUs for sewer and water. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Hi. And I'd like to thank uh, David Phil for working on that. Okay. Yeah, David, you're doing a good job on that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we hopefully we can do some some type of minimal regionalization between the water and the sewer, and and hopefully financially it'll it'll work out for the town of Hadley and the town of Amherst. No, it's great. And I'm glad that we're, you know, doing something again to partner with Amherst and, uh, you know, uh, building our relationship with them. So thank you, David, for doing all that. All right. Cable Oversight Committee resignations. Uh, so we have David Moskin, Linda Hannum, and Linda Castronovo have submitted their resignation for the Cable Oversight Committee. The select board is deciding uh, we should talk about whether to disband the committee or ask for new members. Um, um, can, yes. can we delay making that decision on whether to disband or ask for new members until we get our debrief later in the week from them? Were we expecting a debrief of, oh yes, yeah, they were gonna call us perhaps, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's delay this until we hear some from them and uh, see what's going on. Um, unless anybody objects to that right now, but I don't see any need to, to rush into this right this minute. No, and, and I think the committee was good. There was, there was a lot of input. I mean, there was a lot of discussion, bad discussion, good discussion, but they had quite a bit of input and they did a lot of work with other communities looking into this. Okay, so let's uh, just move on from that. All right, so library, fire substation, and senior center updates. Um, does anybody want to kick it off at, in particular? I don't know if anybody here is from the fire representing what's going on with the fire substation since Joyce is out. I can Jane is waving her hand over there. Oh. I can tell you, I've got them by every day. They got garage doors going in. They're working on finishing exterior and uh, working on interior mechanicals and, and things like that. It's moving along well. And David, did they have any change orders or anything that you know of on that, uh, David Nixon? 
Do you know? I'm not aware of any change orders right now ready for the board. I didn't hear anything on that. Okay. Um, Molly, do you want to give an update on the library or? Sure. Yeah, the, um, the library? library building committee met on Monday night. Um, focus of the conversation was, uh, you know, kind of where the project stood. Um, there's some work being done trying to uh, finish up kind of buttoning up the, the building, you know, from the elements. So uh, to eventually bring that work inside. Um, and a lot of, lot of discussion about uh, some of the interior, you know, the carpet choices and things like that. So those decisions are getting made. Um, and there were a few uh, change orders being discussed. Um, 3,000, 2,000, so, you know, relatively small dollar amounts, but those were uh, finding their way for discussion to the library trustees as well. So nothing in front of us right now. Okay, so we don't need to vote on any of those changes right now? No. Okay. no. Uh, Jane, do you want to give an update of uh, the senior center? I know that we are maybe going to talk about solar tonight as well, so... Well, the building is continuing and looking like, you know, they're going to make their May 1st deadline. So, well, close to May 1st deadline in terms of finishing the job, which is good because otherwise they probably would have to do a new contract extension with you folks. But things are moving right along. They're finishing up on everything. So it's looking really good. The, uh, be, is, the final, is the final... No paving still on schedule, Jane, to finish it's up? It's scheduled the... for Friday and the striping for Monday. Oh, really? Okay. And they're doing um, grading and topsoil and all that stuff right now. They okay, finished good. the cement pours. They're doing the exterior painting. Yeah, it's almost done, so... <laughs> It's kind of weird in this time that the senior center is almost done. I thought it would be much more celebratory at this point, but everybody being isolated, it's kind of tricky. Um, it's really anticlimactic. We've worked for four years on this project. It's going to be done. It's a beautiful building and there it sits. Yeah. Well, on that note, I know that the senior center building committee uh, met this week and voted in favor of having the procurement process to develop an invitation for bid package for a roof mounted PV system. Um, basically, uh, some, someone from Northeast Solar uh, met with them and did some design work and kind of came up with a 144 panel roof layout and they're approximating, it's still got to go out to bid, that a system of this size would be around $150,000. And the contingency budget still has a balance of 225000 So they're basically asking if the select board could vote on this scope um, and send it out to bid. Is, am I correct kind of with saying that, Jane? What? What was decided? I, I think you have the contingency budget wrong. I think we still have three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh, maybe. Okay. Because we have the the contractor is still due nine hundred thousand dollars, and we have a third of that in contingency. Okay, it might be that after if the solar panels were one hundred fifty thousand, there would still be a balance of two hundred twenty-five. That would do it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I misread that. Can, can I ask why we're adding something on in this time where we are short on money as it is and kind of adding nice to haves? And I say that as someone that has the largest solar array you can have on a residential house in, in town. And I, it works financially for a residential location because of the tax credits and, and, and whatnot. But on a commercial facility or government facility, there aren't those tax credits and, and, and rebates and whatnot. So I think to spend $150,000 possibly on something that may or may not pay itself back over 30 years at this time is pretty short-sighted for the budget. It's actually um, would pay back by the seventh year. And overall, we would end up at the end of 25 years with an $85,000 credit to the town. Uh, I'm against spending the extra money at this point with our, our budget situation. 
Do we have anyone? Have we borrowed the rest of the money for the senior center or not? No. Uh, we have a big borrowing coming. The final borrowing is tentatively <coughs> scheduled for November. Well, but our interest rate on the last ban was like less than 1%, correct? It was like 0.95 or something like that? Yeah, yeah it was less than 1%. And all of these calculations were made at a 3% loan rate. So it's an opportunity for savings rather than spending more than in a time of financial crisis for the town. What Jane? would be the uh, problem deferring this? <clears throat> because the, you, we've got the metal seam roof, right? Which would be ready for this PV array at a future point in time? Yes, anytime it would be ready. Jane, do we have a finite a uh, uh, set of calculations? Uh, I thought so Phil Palumbo sent those to you. I have them. Yes. Uh, he might have sent them. I I remember seeing something uh, some time ago, and I noticed that the price per kilowatt hour was different from what we're expected to be paying. So um, I asked. I sent a query back, but I don't recall seeing any response to that query. So the calculate I asked that same question and the calculation was made on a rate of 11 cents per kilowatt hour. All right, we're paying 9 cents per kilowatt hour. So there's even more savings. All right. So really if it's set and what do you say over 20 years is 85,000 payback? Yes. Uh, you know, although we really can't afford it right now in this time, it, it seems like it's going to pay for itself over a period of time. And given the cheaper borrowing rate and the lower electric cost, it will do that even faster. Yeah. And there are actually, David, some um, rebates for commercial things of the larger scale. And there, that may be the case, but it's not something we need to be spending the money on now. This is something we can look at in a year or two or whatever when we have extra, extra money in the budget to spend on nice to have. Well, part of the question is, my understanding is that the money that the town voted for the senior center project um, does not hold on forever. And after six months of occupancy or some number that it, it doesn't get spent, then it's turned back to the town. Whereas that money was voted by the people to do the best possible senior center we could do. And that, as the committee feels, is to put solar on it for the long range future of the town. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely in favor of putting in the solar to the extent we can. I'm just questioning the timing of it. If if we have the luxury of some number of months, maybe we do need to at least wait and see how this budget plays out. I think we're going to know more, you know, over the next couple of months. Um, I don't think interest rates are going anywhere, um, not not in the near term. So, if we could defer this, maybe just for sixty days or something like that, is there any harm to the? project if, and then to your point jane stays within the no window. i don't i don't see any harm to the project is linda still on that she could respond is there a problem <laughs> about the money and holding it so i'm just wondering maybe jane linda and i can get together and go over the numbers maybe with phil palumbo we can go over the numbers and have uh have a unified recommendation yeah, I think that's okay, yeah, that, that would be good because yeah, Phil just sent this yesterday afternoon after the uh, senior center building committee meeting. I mean, I think there's a lot of good arguments. I mean, it does create jobs, um, you know, different things. So I think looking at the numbers a little closer and the payback would be good and, and see where we go from there. Yeah, I'd like to take some time with it. So okay. I, I like uh, David's idea that we talk about it. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, good. Well, thank you. Linda, how long do we have before the borrowing when that money will be returned? Six months or eight months or? What do you mean returned? For so the balance. The, you wouldn't have oh, to what, I use it or lose it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I honestly hadn't heard about that. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, but that's, that's new to me. 
Um, we have until, I mean, we're not going to do our final borrowing until November. And at that point we would borrow everything that we were had, uh, we had spent. And I, I think we were always thinking that we probably would spend um, most of it. And David, I'm not aware of, at some point we're not allowed to finish borrowing on it. If there's something, an add on in another six months, that's new to me. Yes. That's something Bill Palumbo said. I don't know okay. where it came from otherwise. Uh, and I, I need some time with that then. It's certainly something I want to, we'd want to check out, but I, but I, I just don't know about it right now. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why we have that sweep article on every town meeting warrant is in order to clean up those uh, leftover uh, right. uh, projects. And if they're borrowing or cash, we still need to have a town meeting vote to uh, to return that money. Yeah, but but that's by our choice, and it's beginning to. And what Jane was saying was something like well, we didn't have the option after a while that we lose the option yeah. to using oh, up oh, the oh. money. So that's what I want to find out about. Yeah, let's get together. We can talk about those technical issues. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. good. Thank you, Linda, for popping sure. up. <laughs> yeah. You're on call. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back to sleep now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Back to watching TV. <laughs> All right. Um, Very nice. <laughs> the town administrator report. David, do you have anything to update us with there? Uh, yeah, we talked about the COVID-19. Um, uh, we're about to begin the project for the town hall pillar uh, update uh, uh, upgrades. Um, and we were preparing bid documents for insulating the public safety complex. Uh, adult use marijuana. Last time the select board remained uh, awarded the remaining license for adult use marijuana to Hadleaf Holistic subject to successful negotiations of a community host agreement. Uh, the other proposer, Mint, uh, has appealed that decision. So this is something that we should talk about um, at, a, at another uh, select board meeting as to whether we want to hear that appeal or not. Their claim was that their attorney for Mint uh, had a bad connection for um, the Zoom meeting and was not able to participate. Um, so we can talk about the merits of whether that uh, appeal is uh, something that's worth uh, uh, considering or not. Um, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to continue working with Hadley Holistics and for a host community agreement. And so we're beginning those discussions this week. Uh, the advertisement for my replacement is uh, posted. There's a, a link to that post. Uh, applications are due on May 11th. And we hope to have somebody in by August. Uh, who will then become the new town administrator and I will take a supporting role. Um, all right, so our revenues for March uh, look pretty good. We had a pretty strong third quarter. I'm not expecting that trend to continue, um, but we are uh, as well positioned as I think we can be given that uh, the third, fourth quarter is going to be difficult, particularly with respect to local receipts. Uh, I think we're in, in a strong position. Um, and then our expenses are tracking normally. Uh, we talked about the financial management team. Um, Mr. Thomas Quinlan, has, our new building inspector, has started up the um, building coordination meetings that Tim Nyhart had initiated some time ago. So those meetings will happen on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. and it will be an opportunity for us to coordinate any commercial or residential building projects among a bunch of different departments, fire, conservation, licensing coordinator, assessors, uh, building inspector, PPW, and so forth. As we uh, take advantage of whatever opportunities in the future we may have to uh, grow our way out of the current mess that we're in, uh, these coordinating meetings will be uh, worth their weight in gold uh, because it'll ensure that we have smooth permitting 
and building and inspections um, for every major project going forward. So um, that'll reduce any future hiccups. Um, we talked about the budget and everything else is on hold until we have a balanced budget after uh, the next week or so. David, we're meeting next Wednesday. Next, next Wednesday. And David, one other thing is on the host community agreement, do we need a select board committee to review that? work on that with you? I mean, I know we have the one we used in the past, but I don't know if there's any more negotiation needed besides that. Be, uh, yeah, that would actually be helpful to have a select board uh, representative on that uh, on that meeting. Okay. Anybody Let want to know, I'd be happy to do it. I did it last time, but if somebody else wants to do it as well, that, you know, more than welcome to have other people involved, so. I know Molly was on there last time too, but you yeah, guys did a great but job. Rolling off. <laughs> uh, yeah, except you're not going to be around too much longer, <laughs> unfortunately. Christian, would be happy to work with you on this. Okay. 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 With that, I think we are holding an executive session. Uh, DPW personnel. I got one quick announcement before. Oh, you oh yeah, I for, totally forgot. Uh, actually, before we go there, how about any other items that I anticipated in 48 hours? Anything there? I feel like we've covered it all, but could be something. And then announcements, David, go right ahead. Yeah, just uh, I'm going to do Joyce's job tonight. Um, condolences to the family of Ted Capinos. He passed away at the uh, soldier's home on April 7th. And uh, he's a longtime resident of Hadley. So I just wanted to pass on our condolences to his family. And uh, Joyce, Joyce usually thanks the police, fire, DBW, all our employees for working through this crisis we got going on. And we really need to address our help and what a good job they're doing. Yeah, and well, thanks to Joyce too. I mean, the reason she's not here tonight is that she's working at the hospital. So so thanks yeah. to her for, you know, working long shifts there and uh, helping heal our community. So thanks, thanks to her. And uh, thanks for the Easter parade, which was great fun. Yeah, yeah that was great. All right, and so can I have a motion to uh, to convene an executive session? Uh, do we need the motion to go in? Right. Make a motion that we go into executive session for purposes of discussing uh, discipline performance uh, issues around personnel, uh, not to reconvene in open session uh, and the department is the DPW. Second. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. Uh, we will not reconvene in session and just need to complete a roll call vote before moving into executive session. We'll call vote Stanley. Yes. Keegan. Yes. Bill. Yes. And Waskevitz. Yes. And Waskevitz <clears throat> is going to be uh, not joining us in uh, yes. the executive session. Okay. 